Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we're going to be talking about new releases from Lisa Eldridge. So I have lip swatches and arm swatches of all of the new uh, lip glosses and lipsticks. And I also picked up quite a few of the lip pencils, so we'll go through those as well. And in addition, I got samples of the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation that is coming out soon. So if you did not uh, pick up anything from this most recent launch, then hopefully these uh, sample swatches will help you. I have shades one through seven, and this is what the sample cards come like. And there's about enough for about three applications in each one of these. And the ingredients are on the back. So I will leave those listed down below in the description box, but you can see there's also a QR code here. And when you scan this QR code, you are taken to a special video from Lisa Eldridge. This is not something that's just regularly posted on her YouTube. You need to scan it or get a link from somebody in order to be able to access this. But this will help. It's all about the foundation and how to kind of um, pick your best shade and so forth. So according to the package, this intelligently formulated self-setting foundation blends effortlessly to smooth and unify skin with a natural looking soft focus finish. The skin friendly formula gives customizable medium coverage that fuses seamlessly with your skin. Start with a little and build to your desired level of enhanced perfection. So I have some thoughts on these. I have a couple of demos that I will show you of the foundation and I've done some other wear tests and things that were not filmed so I have the results from those that I will share with you as well but first let's start with those demos all right so I wanted to try out the Lisa Eldridge foundation we're going to start off with the lightest one um this might actually be too light we'll see but I feel like I'm probably going to be a one or a two so I have the Surat Perfectionist Primer on. All right, and it does look a little bit lighter and pinker as I'm opening it. I'm trying not to spill this, let's see. All right, so it's very thin, definitely very light. And let me get a brush. I'm gonna use the brush from uh, Ruffer. This is 31, the um, new foundation brush. Add a little bit more so you can see it's um probably like a light to medium coverage this way and i mean you could keep continue layering this and build it up it's definitely just a, a touch too light i think for me but you know what let's just put it on today <laughs> check the performance might as well see how it performs uh, you know, even if it's the wrong color. And we'll have to see if this oxidizes or anything throughout the day as well. But don't want to waste the samples. All right, so this is shade one. So this is the finish up close. Got the hair. The finish is very nice. You know, um, we'll let it sit for a couple minutes and see how it looks then. All right, so it's been about two minutes and I added powder to this side. I used the uh, Suku Oil Rich Glow Loose Powder just on the right side. So here's with powder, here's without. You know, I don't think you need powder, but I do think it looks like my, you know, this is an effect of the powder, but it actually makes my pores look a little bit smaller with the powder. So a little bit more refined with it. Again, it's going to depend what powder you use, I'm sure, but yeah, here's this. And I'm going to finish my makeup and I'll see you in a minute. All right. So here's the foundation after about 15 minutes. And again, this is the side that was set with the Suku powder. And I have on the Chantecaille Holiday Highlighter and Blush here. And this side, blush and highlight as well, no powder though. So here's the difference. And I would have to say that maybe there has been a tiny bit of oxidation, you know, totally normal. Um, 
I think the color looks like a slightly better match than it did before. It's still definitely the wrong color. It's a little bit too cool and a touch too light. So I just need to warm it up a little bit. Um, so we'll try another number next time. And on my lips, I have the new Blush Lightly pencil and lipstick. So here it is. All right, so this is our eight hour check-in with the foundation. Right side here has powder, left side does not. I'm gonna bring you in closer. All right, so let me start off by saying that I do think both sides look very nice still. But I want you to let me know what you think. I do see a difference between the sides. So I am curious what you think about them. I personally think that the side with the powder looks a little bit better. I feel like this side here looks a little bit patchier, kind of like part of it's like wearing off, whereas with the powder doesn't. Now, as for the texture, it feels silky, you know, like as the natural oils and everything has started to come through, I can feel a little bit of that on my skin. Like it has not stayed like uh, you know, as matte feeling on the skin as it was earlier. It's not dewy or anything, but I would say both sides feel pretty much the same. So please let me know what you think. Do you have a preference between the sides? Thanks. Oh, and by the way, this is the Cinnabar lip gloss. All right, so we're gonna try on shade two of the Lisa Eldridge foundation. And I have worn this for a few days now. I've worn shade one, but we're gonna start off with a primer. This is the Dior Forever Skin Veil Primer. So it's a moisturizing primer. I have worn the foundation so far with no primer and with the Syrah Perfectionist Primer. So I figure we'll try a different kind, see how this performs. So you can see that this primer, it Again, as it's a moisturizing primer, so it's gonna leave your skin feeling like dewier and fresher looking. And I figure we'll go ahead and see how the Lisa Eldridge performs on this type of primer as well. So this is shade two, and this is kind of a, a watery foundation, very thin. Just gonna dab some on here, and let's blend this out. So I'm gonna use a different style of foundation brush than what I usually use. This is the angled foundation brush from Omnia. And I personally don't usually like this paintbrush style of brush, but this is what Lisa Eldridge uses with the foundation. Um, this style looks like she has a brush coming out. Um, so I figure let's see if the application is you know, better this way with this type of brush since that's kind of how it's designed to be used. So, first of all, this color, th this would definitely be my shade, I think, in here. Just gonna add a little bit more. And I don't have any concealer on today, so I'm just gonna make sure I go underneath the eyes a little bit. I have to say, I'm kind of doing this blind. So let me grab a mirror and make sure it's all smoothed in. All right, here it is. I have to say, I do think the finish looks better with this style of brush um, or, you know, finger application. I've done this with fingers as well. Mm, I still think it looks better with this brush. Uh, it just, it, looks a little bit smoother and I think the coverage looks a little bit fuller this way as well. Now this is a buildable foundation so I could build it a little bit more than this but even then I still feel like it doesn't go past medium. So I will have to test the uh, brush with a different primer as well and see whether it's the primer that's making the difference or whether it's the brush but I definitely think that this application just looks a little bit more a little bit more refined on my skin. Right, and here's the Lisa Eldridge foundation from a distance. So I actually think it looks really nice. All right, so I hope that was helpful. We're gonna start off by swatching the foundation. I have shades one through eight, and these are the lighter shades. She has a pretty extensive collection or shade range here. I think it's 40 shades. So this is shade one and 
you can see in the demo I did use I started off with shade one and you can see that it is a very light very fair foundation and there are some cool tones to it you can see there is a little bit of a rosy hue to it shade two is my shade and this one is more neutral and you can see just from the consistency that this is a thin foundation it's more serum like okay and here is shade three which you can see is going to be warmer in tone definitely see that like yellow base here and shade four you can see it's going to be more neutral again a little bit cooler than three but it's going to be a little bit deeper obviously than two just something that is like interesting. So shades one through four, it's labeled like one, two, three, four, but shades five, six, seven, eight or five, six, uh, five, six, seven, eight, like whoosh instead. I just thought that was interesting. Um, just a whole different. So I just expected them to go in the same type of numerical order. So this is a shade five. Six. Seven. And this one here is eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So just a little bit about this foundation you know again it is going to be a thin serum like foundation i think it is a really nice product it's made in italy i think it looks really pretty on the skin and as you can see from the wear test you know for me it does perform better if i set it with powder and as some of your natural oils start peeking through it really gets this beautiful skin like finish to it it's not quite a satin foundation. It's not dewy. It's not matte. It's kind of in between. It's more natural skin foundation. But for me, in order to really get that appearance, it needs to be on my skin for like 20 minutes or so until some of my natural oils start peeking through. And I have experimented with different application brushes. I've used fingers, uh, different style brushes, as well as different primers. And I find that it works the best with a hydrating primer like the Dior Forever Skin Veil. With this primer, it makes my skin look flawless. Like it looks really pretty, really natural with this and it's got the right amount of moisture. If I don't use a primer and I just have fresh skincare down, it doesn't look quite as good. Like it's not as smooth looking, um, you know, it's just, it's not as even. If I use a more mattifying primer, like the Surratt and so forth, I feel like it looks a little bit dry. So I really think, you know, using a primer makes a big difference with this one. And I think it's a really pretty foundation. So if I do not set it with any powder, you know, I do have some, some wearing away by the end of the day. If I set it with powder, I can get a full day's wear from it with no issues. It still looks flawless. I don't have any issues with the powder, like caking up or anything either. Everything looks great. So my recommendation then would be to use a, a moisturizing primer like the Dior Forever Skin Veil. You can use any brush application or finger application that you like with this. I have tested it with different brushes and uh, in the one demo that I, I think it was the second one, I mentioned that I wasn't sure whether using a more paint, paintbrush style brush made a difference with application. I would say, you know, it does kind of give you like a little bit of a smoother finish, but you do have to worry a little bit more about streaking, um, you know, depending on how you apply it. Because the one time I was applying it with this, it was like drying a little bit too fast. So, you know, I had to kind of hurry up to get that blended nicely but it wasn't really the brush that made a difference. Any of the brushes on top of this primer or even my fingers on top of this primer just made it look really, really beautiful. So while I'm talking, I'll just show you these swatches again so you can look at that and let's do a few comparisons. 
So this is the Chanel Ultra Latent and BD01. Let me put this one right up top. You can see that it is similar to shade one, which is why I kind of thought that one might be my shade. But shade one from Lisa Eldridge is just gonna be a little bit lighter and a little bit pinker. So um, yeah, it's just gonna be a little bit more fair than the BD01 from Chanel. And then we also have the Clay de Poe. This is the Radiant Fluid Natural Foundation. This is shade I-10. And you can see that that is gonna be a pretty good match with shade two. This is the Chanel Sublimage in shade PR12. And I feel like that's gonna be closest to shade three. Let me put a little bit of that right over here. So you can see that those are gonna be fairly similar. My mistake, that's actually gonna be shade two. It's similar to shade two, it's just slightly darker. So the Givenchy Prisma Libra Foundation in shade 1N95, I'll put that at the top. That's gonna to be a little bit more yellow than shade one or two, but it's gonna be a lot lighter than shade three. So again, this is the Givenchy Chanel BD10, shade one, shade two, uh, BR12 from Chanel, three and four. We're just gonna test a couple more. This is Kogendo Aqua in 002. Most of my foundations are pretty much all the same shade. So <laughs> I'm trying to test ones that are, I have two shades of. So this is 002 and it's gonna be a little bit, it's kind of in between two and three. So here's 002, this is two, this is three. And this is the Kogendo Aqua in 012, which is gonna be much more similar to shade two. We'll put that right in between one and two here. So this is one, this is two, this is 012 from Kogendo. All right, so I hope that was helpful. And overall, I think it is a nice foundation. So yeah, I mean, in my opinion, if you have the right base products down, it's gonna make your skin look really nice. So really nice foundation, but do check the ingredients because I have heard that some people, um, you know, I haven't had any irritation with this. At first I thought maybe I was, but I think it was something else because I've been testing it and no other issues. But there I have heard, uh, you know, that some people are not quite so happy with the ingredient list uh, due to potential irritation. Again, that's a completely personal thing. Everybody's skin reacts differently. I do not know anybody who has personally had any uh, irritation from it, but I will leave the ingredients down below. So if you know that you have a skin sensitivity or allergy to any particular ingredients, be sure to check it out. Oh, you know what? There's one more foundation I wanted to test. This is the new Sisley Fido Tent Nude. This is the shade 00, it's like three zeros, N. And I wanna put that with the shade number one. You can see that they are going to be fairly similar. You can see how watery the Sisley is. It's a skin tint, essentially, not truly a foundation. So it's gonna be much more sheer, but it does have similar coloring to shade one from Lisa Eldridge. All right, so let's move on to the lip products. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the arm swatches. There are three new lip glosses that were released. And I do have a video with all of the other shades already up. So if you want to, you know, take a look at that, I'll leave that linked down below. This one here is Petal. Let's see if I can get that built up a little bit better here. So here's Petal. And Petal is gonna be a warm toned rosy pink. I think it's actually a really pretty gloss. I really like it. And then we have the Cinnabar gloss. And Cinnabar and Petal are both new lipstick shades. You can see when this comes out, this is really gonna be like a brown based, um, 
it's brown and some red. It's like one of those brownie red kind of shades. And then we have Dragon, which is a new gloss based off of the lipstick color that came out last year that was so popular, which is like a terracotta orange shade. So these are the three new glosses. I have to say, I really do like all three shades of the new gloss. I think it's really pretty. In the lip swatches I show you, I built them up so you can see the color. Normally, you can see I was having a little issue with the, the gloopiness, <laughs> the gloppiness of having so much product on. Normally, I wouldn't wear quite so much product at one time because it's a little bit too much, but just for the sake of showing you the colors. This here is Intrigue. And you can see how opaque one swipe is. Now, Intrigue is a shade that was supposed to be like incredibly light, looked like it was almost like concealer lips. You can see it's, an, it's a unique shade. It's like mauve mixed with peach. I mean, you can see where it's built up. You've got kind of those plummy mauve tones, but it's peach. So I find that to be a, a very interesting shade. And then we have Petal, which goes with the gloss. So here's Petal. I'm just gonna put a little bit of Petal right by the gloss so you can see how those compare. You can see that the gloss is going to have, it's slightly cooler than the lipstick. One of the things I find interesting about these, and I know um, some other people have noticed this as well, these shades, they seem to have more of a opaque, more like whiter base. So they can look a little chalky. This one here is Blush Lightly. And this is supposed to be a lighter version of Blush. I do think it's a little warmer in tone. We're gonna leave some space to swatch Blush next to that as well. And then this one here is Cinnabar. Let's put that with the Cinnabar Gloss here as well. So you can see how they go together, but you can see that the Cinnabar Gloss is a little bit more brown. There's a little bit more cocoa in it where there's more red in the lipstick. It's actually more of a brick red with some brown in it compared to the gloss, which is more of that chocolate brown with some red. So this one here is Velvet Blush, which came out, was that last year or two years ago? But you can see that blush is going to be deeper, but it's also going to be cooler in tone. I feel like the base of blush lightly is more white compared to blush, which seems to be, I don't know, the, the undertones are just different on there. So, um, you know, blush lightly is definitely going to be warmer in tone, in my opinion. So I had a couple of the Lisa Eldridge pencils from before. And you can see this is the old packaging. This is the new packaging. So they are a little different. This is like more of a glossier finish. And this is like a matte plastic at the bottom. So they are made in Germany. They're the same size, 1.2 grams or 0 0.04 ounces with a two year shelf life. And this one here, my older one here, this one is blush. So let me put that right here so you can see that. You can see that blush is more pink than the lipstick. It's actually like a cooler version of blush lightly, but that same depth. Now, Lisa Eldridge has mentioned that these lip pencils, sometimes they're not gonna be an exact match because they're meant to go. This is the petal lip liner with the petal lipstick. This one here is blush lightly. So you can see how blush lightly compares to blush in the liner as well. It's still gonna be warmer in tone. And even so, it's a little bit deeper than the blush lightly lipstick. Slight, I think the, the level of warmth is about the same, but the level of depth is a little different. And then this one here is Cinnabar. And you can see Cinnabar goes really well with the lipstick. Compared to the gloss, it's way more red than the gloss. Let me put, put these with the glosses as well so you can see that. And here's Petal. So let's go through the other velvet lipsticks. And these are older shades and we'll go through some of the lip liners I have. This one here is Ribbon.
Here's a fair. You can see that the Affair lip liner is going to be warmer than the Affair lipstick. The lipstick is more, it's a little bit cooler, it's a little bit browner. We've got more of this like warmer, peachier tone to the Affair lip liner. This one here, I didn't buy the lipstick, but I wanted to show you a fawn. This is the, I'm sorry, I didn't buy the lip liner for it, but fawn with the Affair lip liner. One here is Velvet Beauty. I'm actually gonna put this over here near, this is the blush lightly and the blush and petal. So you can see that I think personally, I think it goes really well with the blush lightly lip liner. Okay, just a few more. This here, we've got the Cinnabar liner. This is going to be Velvet Decade, which is a chocolate brown. You can see how that goes with Cinnabar. The Cinnabar liner is gonna be much more red. So here's Velvet Carnival. It's not gonna go with any of those liners, so I'm just gonna stick it here just so you can see the shade, but it's really more of a bright blue base fuchsia. And Velvet Midnight, same deal. It's not gonna quite go with any of these. It's really a deep eggplant purple. And here is Velvet Morning. And I was considering getting this lip liner, but I didn't get it. I don't have one quite that orange. It's a really pretty orangey red shade though. I love this color. When I get another liner, that one's definitely gonna be on my list. We also have Velvet Myth. And let's see if I can fit that in right here near Cinnabar. So Velvet Myth is gonna be much more berry, but if you wanna warm up Velvet Myth a little bit, I think they're actually a really good mix together. And then we have Velvet Muse here, which is my favorite lip color from Lisa Eldridge. And I did pick up the Muse lip liner. So here's Muse. You can see that the lip liner is a pretty good match. It is slightly warmer, but very slightly. You can't really tell too much. And then let's go on with Velvet Jazz. So here's Velvet Jazz, which is a little bit more berry-ish. And I picked up the Velvet Jazz lip liner here as well. So Velvet Jazz is more of like a burgundy red. You can definitely see that burgundy tone. Let's put Myth over here as well. So you can see Myth with Jazz. I think those are good. And then this one here is Velvet Dragon. I'm gonna squeeze this in here so it's kind of near Cinnabar. Cinnabar is gonna be more brown uh, and a little bit more red, but it's the closest one out of the ones that I have. And that is it then. So we did Velvet Jazz, it's my last lipstick. All right, so these are it for the Lisa Eldridge Velvet lipsticks and glosses that I have, as well as the new lip liners. And I have to say that overall, you know, her formula is still the same. I think it's a nice velvet formula. For me, if I wear it day after day after day, it can be a little bit drying, but if you put some lip balm on before it, you know, that makes it a little bit more comfortable. Or if you top it with lip balm, you know, you get a little bit of a glossier look, but I personally really like that texture. I really love the glosses. And as for these new shades that came out, I have to say that they are, you know, a nice addition to her line, but they are not my favorites. If I were to uh, purchase these again, I think Cinnabar is a very unique shade. So I would pick up Cinnabar and then um, this, this one here, Cinnabar, and then Petal. Those are the two that I like the most. I prefer blush over blush lightly, and I don't really care for intrigue personally. But uh, again, these, these shades, these three, Intrigue, Petal, and Blush Lightly, they all seem to have just a little bit of that like chalky vibe on my skin. So I don't think they're best for my particular skin tone. You know, so yeah, if you're interested in it, you know, definitely check out as many swatches as you can. But I think Cinnabar is a really interesting shade. I think that's really great. And I like the Petal lipstick. I have to say though, I love all three shades of the gloss. I think the shades in the gloss are gorgeous and they don't seem to have that same 
um, you know, whitish base to them in the gloss. They're more sheer. They're a little bit more vibrant. They're a little bit brighter in, in tone. I think they're really nice. So as for the lip liners, I like the Lisa Eldridge lip liners. I think they're a nice lip liner. You know, if you're using it as your only lip product for the day, they really stay put. It's a great way to get, you know, like a, a transfer proof kind of lip look, but you know, wearing them on their own without any gloss or anything for me is a little bit drying. So if I wear them on their own, I typically top it with a little lip gloss, usually a clear lip gloss to keep that color or maybe a matching lip gloss. And I like doing it that way. The glosses, you know, even with a lip liner underneath, I do get a little bit of product that can come out if I have too much on there. So just something to know, it's a gloss, what do you expect? <laughs> so, I mean, that it's kind of the nature of the product. The uh, lip liners in general, I really like them. They help keep the products in line. I think they're nice. Do I think they are better than the other lip liners on the market? I don't, um, but they do rank up there with several of my favorites, like the Chanel lip liners, the Pat McGrath lip liners, the Sisley. So I think they're really nice formula. They are creamy, they go on well. I like how they are the type that needs to be sharpened because I feel like I get a better point than retractable lip liners. They do not come with a sharpener. So just a note there that you do need to have your own. Um, and yeah, so overall, I think great addition. For final thoughts, uh, the foundation, I'm not sure whether I personally will be picking up a full size of the foundation or not because I do have many other foundations I like, but I, you know, I don't know what the price is for this foundation, but I'm guessing it's probably going to be somewhere around the $50 to $60 range. And I think that would be a very good price for this. I think it's a nice foundation and provided you've got your base right, you know, you've got a beautiful, beautiful finish. You know, I think it's a really gorgeous uh, product. So um, yeah, I think it's definitely worth checking out, but get samples first and uh, I, I think that's all I have to say for the foundation, but the lipsticks, again, I would check out, you know, as many swatches as possible, see what colors you really want. But personally, I prefer some of the previous shades over these newer shades. Cinnabar though, I think is a really great unique shade and I would definitely recommend that. Lip liners, you know, they're good lip liners. I like having them match the lipsticks. I think that makes it really easy and they go really well with some others. And I love the lip glosses. So, so just one quick color comparison. This is the Givenchy Copper Nude from the holiday. I just wanted to show you how that compared to Cinnabar. You can see that they, uh, you know, they, they don't really match. The uh, Cinnabar is going to have a little bit more red and brown in it. But I did want to show you because they, they do have some similarities. If you're looking for something a little bit lighter than Cinnabar, this might be a good option. This, however, is going to be a satin formula and not a matte formula. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends. I'll see you very soon and have a great day and stay safe and healthy.